Hi folks, this is Tom Affalter and today I'm going to give you a brief overview of methods. We're going to talk about what methods are used for and then we're going to take a look at a common basic method. So the first thing that I've got put together to understand methods is a little application. And all this application does is multiplication form. So if I run this, let's go ahead and execute it. It allows me to put a couple of numbers in here and I've made it so that it works with doubles and I can multiply the numbers out and I have an exit button. So let's take a look at the code that was used to generate this. So I'm going to do a right click view code and this is the code that I put into the program to make it function. So right behind that button click right there, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, I've got two variables that I've declared, one called double num1, one called double num2. I then parse what's in that first number text box into double num1 I parse as a double what's in the second text box into double num2. Once I have those two numbers together, I have the values of the, that are in that text box. Now, the only thing I haven't allowed for here are errors. Um, and we'll talk about that later when we refer to try catches. But right now, let's not worry about the errors. Now, down below, um, I've got my formula. And what I want to have happen in the formula is I want those two numbers multiplied together in their entirety first. That's why I put them in parentheses. And then once it comes up with an answer, I want to convert that into a string and move that into the label answer on the screen. Now, again, I want to review this part with you right here. Um, I can't do a double num one dot two string times a double num two dot two string. If I do that, I would be multiplying the value, string value in the first text box or the string value in the second. I need to first convert them to numbers, then multiply the numbers together, then take the resulting number and at the very end convert it back into a string. Now, before we go on, I want to talk a little bit about what we are looking at here. On the screen, we have actually uh, three different methods. This is what's called a constructor method here. And a constructor method is a special method that automatically executes when this particular form executes. Now, how does it know to do that? Well, notice here that the name of the class is the same as the name of this method. You're only allowed to have a method by the name of the class if it's what's called a constructor method and these are methods that automatically execute. We'll talk about that later when we get into classes but let's focus a little bit more on these two methods down here. These methods are what we refer to as event handlers. They're truly simply a method themselves but they're automatically executed when something occurs in your program and those are automatically assigned. Let's go back to the designer right here. So when I clicked on that button, I can either double click on that button and add the event handler to it, or I can come over to the lightning bolt and select the event handler that I want. And by double clicking on it, it then adds that event handler for me. And it's an empty event handler. And then my responsibility, of course, is to come back in and add the code that represents what that event handler is going to do. So this is a method, but it's a special method that's assigned in the code. If we jump back into our designer code, the code behind it we normally don't look at, you'll see right here in that definition of that button, and this is the exit button, it is basically said add an event handler to this button when it's clicked. So automatically it's going to execute. And you'll notice that we have another one for the second button down below, and it's added in the code behind. Now let's analyze that method. The first thing that we notice about the method is it's made up, and this particular method is made up of a couple of different components. It's got this modifier, and a modifier talks about the access level. Where is this method accessible to? And the word private right now, as we'll talk about later as well, means that this method could only be accessed within this program right here. No other programs on the outside could look in at this program and see this method as it exists because it's private. This void term, as we're going to talk about, refers to the fact that it's a procedure. It's a method that just does something. It doesn't return a value back. And we'll look at those different types of values that can be returned later. The next piece right here is the name of the method. 
So this method is called btn calculate underscore click. It's automatically assigned to me when I double click on that button. I don't have to use it. If I wanted to, let's go back to the form again, what I could have done is I could have, instead of double clicking on the button or double clicking here, I could have typed in whatever name I wanted to call it, then hit enter, and what it would have done at that point is change the name for me. But more commonly, we'll leave the default name there because just like Hungarian notation, this is descriptive. It tells me it's a click event handler and it belongs to this button name on it. Now, these are what are referred to as arguments. Up to this point, we've never used these, and we'll talk in a later lecture where these come in as a benefit. These are automatically generated for me. Sender basically refers to the object that called it. So in this case, button calculate and sender are the same entity. But they don't have to be, and later we'll talk about that and how we could harness that. Uh, but we're going to ignore the, these objects for right now. Um, this guy, by the way, is event arguments. What it says is sometimes event handlers will return some additional information or methods may return additional information that we might want to harness to our advantage. In this particular case, it doesn't do anything with E, but there are some event handlers that do that we'll talk about a little bit later. So these are arguments that are being passed into it. This is the name of the method this void tells it that it's just going to do something and that's all and then private tells me that it's only usable within the code actually that falls between this bracket and this bracket down below so that refers to the scope of that method if you will now we know then when we run this let's put a stop there and I put some numbers in here and I calculate it, I've got to stop over here, and it's jumped to that method, it jumps through the features of the method, gives an answer, and when it's done, it returns back. It's done. Now what I'd like to do is I want to show you how I can create my own method. Now why would I want to do that? Well right now, this code is only usable in one particular location. That is when this button is clicked. But let's say, for sake of argument, I might want to do this in a different location. Maybe I might want to have a menu across the top that when I click that menu button this code runs. I don't want to duplicate this code. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We haven't looked at menus before, but if I jump down below here at my menus and toolbars, there's a thing called a menu strip. And I can throw this menu strip onto my form and it adds a menu very much to what you see above here. And I can put anything in this menu that I'd like. Now, normally on the left-hand side you have file, so watch this, it's very simple to create. I type in file, and then my submenu might simply say something like exit. Okay. My next menu item over here um, might be something like um, action. Not very creative today. And then I want the submenu underneath it to be calculate. Now, the, what I can do is I can add, make this event handler for this particular guy simply by double clicking on him. Or with him selected, um, let's go back here, with him selected, I could come back over to my lightning bolt and do a click method here. This is where I could put any name in that I wanted to, and that's the name that would appear. So either double click here, or I can double click on this guy, and he takes me into the code. Now, what I don't want to have to do is to take all of this code right here and copy it down into here. Why? Well, because if there's a mistake in one location, it's going to be a mistake in two different places. I really want to keep my code to a minimal. So I'd like to have one place where all my calculations are occurring. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down below here, and I'm going to create my own procedure. And a procedure is just a chunk of code that's going to run when I tell it to do that. So I'm going to start off with private because I don't need it outside of this program right now. Later, we'll take a look at other modifiers. So I do private. It's a void method. It's not going to return anything. I'm just going to want it to do something. I want it to do that chunk of code up above. And what do I want to call it? Well, in this case, let's just call it sum. I want it to sum some and answer back. And I do my closing brackets around it. I'm not going to pass any value into it like I did up above here. I just want it to do something simple. 
So I'm going to put my brackets in there. And now I've got this, I've got this method created called sum. And in fact, if I came back up here in my IntelliSense, in this method, and I type SUM, you'll see that sum now pops up in IntelliSense. And notice over here on the right-hand side, it tells me it's a method because it's putting brackets at the end of it. So it knows it's there, it's just not doing anything yet. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to do this code right here. I'm going to grab all of this code out entirely. I'm going to close it up, Control X. I'm going to paste it right here. There you go. And notice now, if I run my program, not a thing is going to happen. Why? Because when I click that button, there's no code to run. I could click that button all day long. Oops, I'll put numbers in. And nothing's going to happen. So what I wanted to do is when I click this button right here, I wanted to execute this sum code. And here is how simple it is. I simply type in sum. And notice it pops up in IntelliSense. And I close it out. Just like that. So when this guy's executed, he's going to see this call for the sum method. He's going to look around and say, oh yeah, here's my sum method down here. It's a void method. It's just going to do it. He's going to come down here, jump through this code, execute it, and jump back up when he's done. Let's prove that. Let's put a stop right there. Let's run the program. Let's put a 5 and a 4 in here. And let's calculate it. So now I've hit the start of my, uh, of my um, um, step through. And now I'm going to step into it. Now watch what happens. It's going to see that sum method there. And it's going to jump down below. Boom. Into the sum method. It's going to run it. Jump back where it left off. Complete that method. And then show me it on the screen. That simple. Now. What's the great advantage to it? Well, watch this. Now, oh, let's get out of that code behind. Let's stop the program from running. And I'm just simply going to take that same exact code right here. I'm going to paste it down below. Okay. And in fact, as long as I'm doing that, let's go back to my designer and let's go back to this file and let's do exit. Let's double click on exit. Now, I want to show you a really cool trick here. Um, but before I do that, let's not code exit yet. Let's not code it. What I want to do now is I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to run the program. Now, exit shouldn't work on my menu. There's my menu right there. right? I can click exit all day long and nothing's going to happen. But now, if I come back in here and I do 6 times 7 and I click calculate. Oops, let's take the stop out. Let's continue it running. And I get my 42. Now let's change this to 7 up here and go to my action calculate. Look at that. So I can run it from different locations, but the code is running from the exact same spot right here. For both clicks, it's going to jump down here and run the code. So it's a great feature. You see now I can refer to it in either location. If there's a mistake in this sum method, I can change it in one location. And I know it's not going to, I don't have to go back to two different locations at this particular point. So there is your basic method. I do want to show you one really cool little trick down here, though. And that is that what I'd like to do is I want to code this exit button. I don't want to have to create a separate method. I'd really like to harness that existing method. So right now, to exit the program, I've got this button exit method right here. And when I run bu bu excuse me, button exit, it closes the program out. What I want to do now is I want to go back to this tool strip method. And rather than create a separate method, what I'd like to do is have this guy right here call, call this exit method. The challenge that I have, though, is this exit method expects to receive two arguments that are automatically passed to it when the button is clicked. So I'm going to have to simulate that. Now, in my case, I'm very lucky because I'm not using either sender or E. If I was using that, the technique I'm going to show you would not work. But right down here now, if I know the name of this method that is going to exit is button exit click. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to paste that in here. And it knows it's a method. Now watch this. When I hit the left arrow, it wants to know what, what is the value for sender and what's the value for E. I don't have values for it. 
and I don't really need values for it, so I'm simply going to put nulls in for both. And what that does is that allows me to call that method without passing anything into it. So let's, let's run this and see what's going to end up happening. Okay, so now I can click the exit button and it stops. Now let's see what happens. Exit here and it stops. Now watch what happens. Let's put a stop here. Let's take a look at it. Right there. Okay, so let's rerun it again. This time, file, exit. It takes me to that method right there. I step into it. It's going to look for button exit underscore click and boom it found it right here now it passed in no values for either one of these guys um, and let's continue on it does the close and of course I'm in step so it's going to go through the close method and the code behind let's get out of that mess I don't want to mess around with that right now and we'll just continue on and we're in business all that code behind back here. So now there's your example of a real basic, basic method. All I got it, really all it's doing is like a player piano. I take a chunk of code, I move it to a location. Whenever I want to run that chunk of code, I call it. And the things that you have to remember when you create that particular method, the most basic components are the modifier, the return data type and void if there's no returning data there is no void there's no data returning here so it's a void the name of the method and then parentheses and if there's going to be arguments which we'll talk about in a, my next lecture then we would put the arguments in there but right now no arguments whatsoever and folks that is your basic basic method